I I invite us I invite us all to not just not so much take the things that we like to see and try to make them our own but to be inspired by them and to kind of create our own version too you know that just because someone's lineage might have a cultural vacuum doesn't mean that you can like suck in you know like anything that serves you you i mean to be inspired by it is beautiful but to have respect for all of the history that came with the protection of that lineage is very important so thank you for speaking to that lib band headdresses Say that again? lib band headdresses in 2017 i think Oh, so shout out to LIB. So our friend Ismail is saying that um, LIB band headdresses in 2017. Thank you for sharing that. And also wanting to uplift that our friend Ismail Ali had uh, participated in a psychedelic state of the union in 2018 <coughs> last year. And then um, on Thursday spoke um, for a psychedelic new deal. And so just wanting to continue that conversation of what a psychedelic new deal entails. And it's modeled after uh, Roosevelt's New Deal and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's Green New Deal. And we're continuing the conversation, building up on what a psychedelic new deal looks like, feels like on the dance floor. Yes. And dovetailing with that, doing things like, you know, making the 11th principle of Burning Man be consent, for example. Yes. We're advancing that cause. We'll, you'll see things about that. Are you down to make that happen yeah. by 2019? Yeah. Let's do it. Because then, okay, because it's 2019, right? And the article of the UN Indigenous Peoples' Rights, the UN DRIP, um, the 19th article is consultation, consent, cooperation, and if we achieve that by this year at Burning Man, we could really raise consciousness about how to become more aligned with some of the folks who are experiencing the most militarized violence around the world. And how powerful would that be, this international festival that receives so much attention and we know like that everything that happens at Burning Man trickles out. We really yes. carry that with us. How can we make Burning Man more less of a microcosm of the world but make the external world, the default world, more of a macrocosm of the yes. microcosm? Yeah. Or the previous microcosm. I don't know. You know you get what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I mean the spores of the culture that we create here carry very far. And so again, I know I do my best to hold myself to a really high standard of how we are with each other in these places because we're in we're in the embryo of collective consciousness right now. We are the evolving edge of what compassionate culture looks like. And so how how can we carry that forth and the consultation piece I think is coming up really really big for me. Like can we you know, give each other permission to consult with each other and to admit that we don't know and to admit that we've made a mistake and to have repair processes in place, I think is a really strong thread that would be good to carry for us. Yeah, and to riff off of that and to envision what that could look like in the future is having mediators on the dance floor, little yes. angels, like, you know, angels in outfits that are there to ensure that we're all in agreement with each other to be able to mediate any disputes. I know you have some experience being a ranger at festivals, and I know we have a little time check, and maybe we want to make some space for questions, but if you want to speak to the ranger experience, and then we'll move into yeah. question and answer. Yeah, I mean, talk to me afterwards. I've definitely seen a lot and uh, worked with a lot, so if you have any specific questions, like that's maybe a good segue, but yeah, I as a as a ranger, I also it's a certain kind of like mindset. It's sort of like you're looking at the world and you're moving through the world as though you're a caretaker of it. And that you're a caretaker of the consciousness of all that the all these beings that you're interacting with. What what I see when I'm in my ranger eyes is people's inner child and their sacred animal too. It's 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 sort of a different 
it's a headspace more than anything and that helps give me the patience to meet someone where they are and to connect with them where they are and build a bridge between you know the experience that they're going through and maybe my life experience and so I invite you all to like try on those spectacles like just what what would it be like if you saw everyone as this beautiful sacred animal this beautiful inner child and seeing them as trying to express that and helping to facilitate as you can and so there's yeah I mean please ask questions of that it would be a good segue because there's just so many stories I could tell I don't even know where to start so before we phase into our question and answer I just wanted to give folks a heads up that today from 515 to 615 adorable earth angel will be speaking at the culture hub and we'll be speaking about light work for black lives spiritual justice ceremony and i'm super excited we have one minute okay oh. and then <laughs> tomorrow um at from 145 to 245 there will be a talk on psychedelics for reparations restoration and regeneration so the conversation is to be continued and that'll be with roman ismail and myself yay at the weekend at the weekend we have one minute if there's still space for questions I have, is, yeah. do we have time for question and answer uh, yeah, like three questions. Okay. all right three questions come for <coughs> yeah I wanted to um, speak to an experience um, that I spoke with you about and it's something I feel unbelievably emotional about it's the second I entered this festival there was a black man being in handcuffs and there was like six white law enforcement officers and for me to walk into this space and understand how I'm going to feel safe it's like everything my whole body automatically was like wow like there should be a circle yes. around this person and yes. we should just be sitting there yes. and breathing and experiencing so I, what's that I, I came in in a, in a situation it didn't seem like there was any ambulance there there was nobody else hurt he was there on his own in the grass and that's my understanding of the situation um, everything after that would be assumption but um, there was nobody else hurt there was nobody else there there was nobody else interacting with law enforcement um, but my question is, how do we deal with situations once law enforcement gets involved? And as a bystander, how do we how do we be witness, or what should we do? That is a very important question. Um, I mean, I would say after law enforcement has gotten involved, just being a witness and or video recording what's happening. Um, in some ways, I, I'm a very preemptive person. And for example, like if I had been on scene and I saw someone in distress, what I would do is I would, I would gather people together and form a circle before law enforcement gets there. Like I assume at some point, law enforcement probably wasn't the first person that saw this person. I mean, who knows really, I don't, I'm not sure, but to feel okay to get involved again that's like where the preemptive work comes in and I mean that's what I would have done if I had been there which I regret not being there obviously but yeah and I guess that's another piece like once law enforcement has already become involved there's a big re-education piece that needs to happen with law enforcement and for us to staff from our own community mediators, such as the Rangers, I think is a beautiful step that truly the Rangers are actually an embodiment of the peace officer that is supposed to be law enforcement. But it, it, that is, yeah, that we have some major cultural work to do there. And, you know, for us again, to like support each other, but to be particularly attuned to like patterns of oppression and be even step in even more strongly to 
to create a new pattern around that is what I would call for. And um, are rangers uh, trained in uh, implicit bias and being prepped for um, when assault happens? Is that something? I mean, I personally, we have, we have some training in that, but not specifically. And it's the other thing too is like kind of like once law enforcement gets involved, like it's kind of out of our hands as rangers. Um, I would like to see that change, like that we're kind of like the first people that are called and then law enforcement is called in, but also we're in Kern County and things are different here. This is our first year here, so. But no, I would love to hear more about that and make that part of our training. Yeah, that can be something that emerges out of this conversation. And can I ask? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a website called Lawyers for Burners, and it will give you the rundown on how to interact with law enforcement if you've been stopped when you're under arrest and what to do. And also, if you do see a situation like that, go find a ranger. Make sure you mark the location and the time. Let them know what you saw, and then the rangers yeah. can be witnesses and report. Yeah. So we can leave it that way. Yeah. Lawyers for burners. Lawyers for burners. Yeah. Um, and I also want to encourage us all to follow up on that situation and contact festival organizers and how the, the act of being interactive and intervening can always look like it's an ongoing process so we can also do check-ins after the event has happened. Any other questions? I think we're about to wrap up. Yes. Just to follow up on that, where, what's the what's the pathway for people to share feedback like that for the festival, like for us to check in? What's the path? The pathway for people to share feedback with the festival, there is actually a email address that I don't know offhand, but it is on the LIB website and they do seek out feedback. So, I, you know, I'm not sure how the reception is on site, but please afterwards there's, you know, it's like info at LIB or something like that. But they do take that into account and things have changed because of what has been submitted and how many people submit about the same thing. So be vocal, you know, let's be vocal about the changes that we want with each other and in our community and in our culture. That's how we collectively evolve. Like, let's not shy away from those conversations. Awesome, and to wrap it up, please do uh, recruit more people to join us later today at five and then tomorrow at Beacon to keep continuing the conversation. Yay. Thank you for joining us. See you on the dance